All right, y'all, let's get started. Good morning, happy Monday. Uh, today we'll be going over the buyer presentation. This is our level up training, all about the PRG buyer presentation. Um, glad to see some of you guys on here, some of you guys that are learning the buyer presentation, and there's some of you guys on here that are using the buyer presentation at a high level. So I think it's a great discussion. Um, as always, guys, um, I like to start off kind of with the mindset behind um, what we're going to train on today. And first of all, guys, we have to understand that the buyer presentation is probably one of the biggest tools that we use in our business because we do a lot of buyer business. Um, so having a really, really good buyer presentation is super key to your success in our industry because there's so many buyers that we're working with. Um, part of having a good buyer presentation is going to be preparing for the buyer presentation, what you do to prepare for it, right? It's not just about showing up and just kind of winging it. There's preparation that's involved in the buyer presentation. Um, part of having a great buyer presentation is your delivery of the buyer presentation. It's not just reading off the buyer presentation. It's actually delivering it in a way that's going to build rapport with the client, that's going to make it engaging, that's going to make it interesting. Great buyer presentation is also going in for the close, getting the client to commit to move forward um, in, in signing our VIP loyalty agreement. And we'll talk about that and, and what that's all about and why that's important. Um, but essentially what we do, guys, that's a lot different than most other companies out there is we list buyers to work with us the same way that we would list a, a seller to list their home with us we essentially list buyers to want to work with us. And the key difference there is that we are getting the client to commit to moving forward with us on that consultation. We're getting them to sign a loyalty agreement and that's going to serve uh, a couple things, right? It's going to help you um, weed out the unserious, right? From the serious. It's going to help make sure that we answer all the questions and objections and rebuttals and all that up front. So that once the client commits to moving forward with you, um, you know, they have, you've answered a lot of the stuff for them, right? So they're, they know why they're working with you. They understand the value in working with you. And um, that's really what the buyer presentation is all about. We're not just, you know, meeting buyers and saying, okay, let's go out and see homes. There's a process of educating the buyers up front. There's a process of, uh, uh, you know, us showing them the value and why they want to work with our team and getting them to, to commit to working with us. Because the biggest, the biggest hurdle with a lot of buyers is that um, buyers sometimes, you know, can have the reputation of not being loyal, right? Of working with multiple agents and not choosing an agent that they're going to work with. So we want to get them to choose us and to see why they want to work with us so that we get them to stick with us to the end. Um, doing a great buyer consultation up front and educating the buyers, it also makes the process easier so that when you're having some of these conversations about the market or why they need to move forward on this particular property or why they need to remove contingencies or why they need to increase their offer, you're coming from a place of authority, right? Because you've already demonstrated why they should be working with you and, and why our team is one of the best teams to work with. So it's a lot different than just, you know, asking someone to do something or to move forward on a property when there's no credibility that has been built there, right? So if you want to get clients to work with you and you want to get them, you know, you want to influence them, you know, in a way that's going to help them out, you got to build that credibility up front. And that's what the buyer consultation does. Um, in our industry, there's a lot of agents who don't do a buyer consultation. They simply meet with someone. Maybe they might ask them, for like their criteria or what are you looking for? They put them on an MLS search and they say, Hey, you know, let me know if you see anything you want to, you know, go tour. That is, if you do it that way, guys, it's going to lead to a lot of disappointment. It's going to lead to buyers falling off. It's going to lead to buyers going elsewhere. It's going to lead to buyers potentially going with another agent who shows them a lot more value. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of agents who do it that way. So by you mastering the buyer presentation and having a really, really good buyer presentation, your conversion levels are going to go a lot higher. Your ability to convert 
you know, a lead from Zillow or a lead from an open house and things of that sort is going to go a lot higher um, as opposed to, you know, just kind of winging it and not having any formal consultation. So let me stop there, guys, because I know I just kind of gave you a lot, but I want to set the stage before we start going into the actual buyer presentation, but I want to set the stage of why it's important and um, the mindset behind it. Are there any questions about why we do a buyer presentation and the significance and importance of a, of a strong buyer presentation? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we're going to, um, I'm going to be kind of leading the, going through the buyer presentation, but I'm also going to be asking for feedback from you guys because it's important to get some feedback from you guys on this way we can kind of brainstorm on what the best practices are. So I want to start off with what we do before the buyer presentation, right? What are some of the best practices that we do before we even jump on the Zoom, right? How do we prepare for the buyer presentation? What, what you know, sort of tools do you already have opened up online, you know, to prepare for the buyer presentation? How do we prepare? Who wants to volunteer and kind of run me through their preparation process before they even meet, before they even do the uh, buyer consultation? Anybody? Mauricio, walk me through it, bro. What do you do? What do you do to prepare for the buyer presentation? Um, yeah, I mean, I usually just set up, I mean, obviously I already know all about the buyer as much as I can. And I'll just, you know, pull up about a half hour before the presentation, set up all my windows, um, the actual presentation, the PDF, uh, our website, our team website, you know, all the images of everyone on our team. Um, and then also I'll do our Zilla reviews, um, and then I'll have like the MLS and then I'll have the, the contract, not the contract, but the buyer presentation, um, ready to go with signatures, you know, and, and just kind of have it lined up like that. Um, and then just prep. That's kind of it. And just wait on them be early. Okay, so what I heard is, is more of the physical preparation, right? So getting all your windows prepared and stuff like that, the things you're going to use on the actual buyer presentation. So let's talk about that, right? So I'm going to share my screen real quick and kind of show you some of the things that you can have up. Um, okay, so what's important, guys, is going to our actual buyer presentation page. So for those, some of you guys that may be new, uh, or this could be some review. We actually have a hidden page on our website where the buyer's consultation is. So you're going to want to um, favorite this page. And I'll put the link in, in, the, um, in the notes that I'm taking here for this training. But it's the realestateprg.com forward slash VIP buyer. So when you go to this page, um, this is a page that we built that just makes it easy for you to pull everything up. So it has the buyer consultation here. It has kind of a little outline of what the next steps are. And it has a link also for the loyalty agreement, which is what we get the buyer to sign. So this website, this page is a hidden page. It's, it's a hidden page on our website just for internal use. And it's also password protected. So um, I'll put the, the latest password in there. We do change it every once in a while because we don't want people uh, stealing our, our proprietary information. But uh, essentially what happens is you click on the home buyer's consultation here. When you click on this page, it's going to pull up the PDF version of it. So the thought process behind why we built this page, guys, is we want to make it easy, right? We want to make it easy to just pull this thing up, be able to click. It pulls up so you're not having to shuffle and find things and stuff like that. Um, and it has the actual buyer presentation there in a PDF form where you can just kind of go through it and start going through it, right? So that's the main thing there. On this buyer presentation page here, you'll have the loyalty agreement, which this loyalty agreement is part of the buyer presentation page, but I, I saved another copy of just the loyalty agreement, which is the last two pages of it. So when you click on that link there, 
it's going to give you just the last two pages, which is, which is the part that we want our buyers to sign when they're choosing to move forward with us. So we just put it there so it's easy. This way you can just download it, set it up in DocuSign or whatever you got to do. And you're not having to kind of shuffle around to go find it. Now, all of this information, guys, the buyer presentations, they're also in our Google Drive. So if you go on Google Drive into your team, team resources folder and just search for it, it'll be there as well. But we created this page so it has like the easy to get to links and stuff like that. So you're definitely going to want to have this all set up, right? The last thing you want to do is be on the buyer consultation and be scrambling to pull up pages in front of the client. You want to have it all uh, prepped so you know exactly what pages you need to click on. Um, the other page you can have pulled up is our Zillow page. Um, let me see. I thought I had it pulled up. See, now I'm scrambling right now in front of you guys, which is what I'm telling you not to do. But I pulled up the wrong page. That's why. Um, but if you ever just say Zillow and type in PRG real estate in Google, you'll find it. So it's basically our Zillow page here. So you want to have that window already pulled up and ready for you to go because we're going to show the buyer, uh, our team, all our team members. We're going to tell them about how many five-star reviews we have, how many sales in the last 12 months. And we'll scroll down and kind of show them all the different sales that we've done. Any listings that we have on the market, what we've sold, 562 transactions right here sold. And then we show them all the different pages of five-star reviews here as well. Now, depending on your experience, if you have a bunch of five-star reviews that are your own personal one, then I would pull up your personal Zillow page as well. Um, like Hervin, for example, if I click on him, and I open this in a new tab, it'll pull up Hervin's individual profile. So if he has really good reviews and stuff like that, then he might want to pull this up and show some of his individual stuff. If not, then you can just use the team page, right? Because the team page is, is going to show everybody's collectively, and it's really impressive. Um, the other thing you're going to want to have pulled up is going to be the MLS. I'd have the MLS pulled up. And I would have like a stats page pulled up. Uh, give me one quick second. Okay, so I'd have the uh, MLS pulled up. This way you can do a quick search of whatever area they're looking for. Um, you can, if you already have that pulled up, let's say because you already did your pre-consultation over the phone, you pre-screen them, you ask all the right questions. You're going to want to pull up the MLS and probably ha maybe have some stats on the areas that they're looking in. And if you just go to uh, my matrix, you can have all, you can also have this market watch pulled up right here and you can go over some of this information as well. So having these like stats and stuff already pulled up, ready to go is going to make the presentation a lot smoother and you can just go to it. And it also shows the buyer how prepared you are, right? That you prepared for this appointment, that you're not just out here winging it. So by you having all this stuff organized and pulled up, it shows your level of uh, professionalism and how you do business. Uh, one thing we also like to show is like the top agent network. So I'd have that pulled up. And when we're talking about just different opportunities on how we can find off-market properties and stuff like that, you may want to have the top agent network pulled up. This way you can explain what that means and how that separates us from the other agents. Um, are there any other things that you guys do to prepare besides having all the windows up? Or are there any other windows that you guys pull up that you share with your buyers on the buyer consultation? Those of you guys that are, are using it at a high level already. Enrique, one thing that you mentioned right now was also just before you even, obviously we're gonna have these windows up, but also being prepared by calling the client prior to that meeting, right? Just making sure you have all the information needed so that you can be prepared for their scenario. I think it's important because again, a lot of times we're having maybe some newer agents set the appointments and then the senior agents are jumping on and they don't know everything about the client. 
So I would suggest to also to protect your time to go ahead and give that client a call and just, you know, let them know how excited you are to meet with them to say, hey, look, I want to be prepared for our meeting tomorrow. Can I just go ahead and ask you a few other questions? Let me go deeper into, you know, a few different scenarios so that then you're well prepared for that for that meeting that day. Yeah, so the more information, the better, right? Um, to kind of reiterate that, right? Depending on who's conducting the appointment. If you're a junior agent, you're setting the appointment for the senior agent, then asking those questions up front so that you can, you can brief the senior agent. Hey, this is what they're looking for. This is their previous experience. Because then you can also tailor your presentation depending on how experienced the client is as well, right? And we're, we'll get into the delivery of it right now in a second and, and how that comes into play. Um, Liliana, you raised your hand. Do you have any other things you add to um, the preparation, any other tools and resources you show them? Um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of like you said, like um, I've done them a couple of different ways. Like if they're more experienced, um, um, I'll kind of, or sometimes I pull up the listing, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the contract and I kind of go over it really quickly. That way they're familiar with it. It's especially if we're, if I, when I meet with them, I feel like they're already kind of a little bit further, like they're ready to go. Um, and then sometimes it's almost kind of like a, like a offer consultation in one. If I know that they're interested in a certain property, I'll already like pull up information, like a CMA about that property that we discussed um, along with like the, the contract. So they're familiar with it. But that's just if like I talk to them and I know they're like pretty serious about a certain property. Um, yeah, I think that's a great point that you make, Liliana, right? Because it depends on the ex experience, right? If, if this is the client that you've already talked to multiple times or you already know they've purchased other homes, then sometimes you may need to edit some of the stuff and maybe get straight to the point because you don't want to have a disconnect, right? You want to be speaking the language that's going to resonate with the client. So if it's a client who's already bought three homes and you're going through like the escrow process and all that stuff, which kind of now leads us into the delivery aspect, right? Um, they're going to be bored, right? It's going to go over, you know, they're going to tune out. They're going to be bored. They may just be like, hey, I already know this stuff. So asking them, you know, or, or understanding what they already know and what you need to give them is important and being able to, to, uh, adjust right adjust to that different scenario now let's say for your client for example um because you already talked to him over the phone you already asked all the questions like schools are important you have like the great schools page pulled up you know where uh, one of those schools pages right where you can go over the schools or maybe you know they're curious about other parts you know other you know parts of the neighborhood or upcoming uh projects that are being built in the neighborhood you may want to have some of that stuff pulled up or maybe they're concerned about the crime rates right so you may want to have some of that pulled up so kind of what we went over is kind of the basics the fundamentals that you should have pulled up but don't be afraid to add certain things that'll pertain to your particular client okay cool so we got the before right we got the mindset of why we have to deliver we got the understanding of you know what we have to do to prepare right making sure that we confirm the appointment because that's the other thing too is you don't want to have all this stuff prepared and you didn't even confirm the appointment right and then you're on there waiting you took all this time to pull up stats and everything and the client doesn't show up so making sure that you confirm the appointment is also crucial um, before you start doing this and i would definitely give myself at least you know maybe 20 30 minutes before the zoom consultation to have everything prepared Right, because that's the other thing too is when you're rushing and you know trying to do stuff like right away the anxiety and the tension is a little bit higher, you know, versus if you already were prepared, you already had your zoom on, you already had all the windows pulled up, and you still got 20 more minutes before the client shows up. It's just like showing up to a, a show in a property early, right? You're relaxed now, you got to get your coffee, your water whatever you set the stage you make sure your background looks good all that stuff um you know then it's a different experience for the client when you're cool calm and collect versus you're scrambling and rushing you know to try to jump on the zoom um the other thing too is making sure that physically the area is set up so like right now i'm in my back room which kind of is like my office slash workout room so you can see like my treadmill and my weights and stuff like that 
Um, I probably wouldn't do a, a Zoom consultation in here with the client. I'd probably want to make sure it's somewhere where they're not seeing my treadmill and all that. But one thing that is important is like I have a window to my uh, left hand side. So I have light shining on me, which makes my screen nice and bright and you can see me okay. You don't want to be with the light behind you because then that is really distracting as well when the light's behind you um, and it doesn't look that right. So you also got to make sure that they can hear you and they can see you okay so that it's a better experience for the client as well. Um, if you have like AirPods or earphones that you can connect to your computer, that also um, makes a big difference as well, right? Because the audio will sound a lot clearer and stuff like that. So just some tips on how to physically prepare for that. Okay, let's talk about delivery. Um, that's the next part of it, right? The delivery of the presentation. What are some of the things mentally, mental cues you are doing when you do your buyer consultation and when you're actually delivering the consultation and when you're speaking to the client and stuff like that? How, what's your demeanor like? Are you conscious of that? Um, are there certain things you do during the delivery to check in? client who would like to share some best practices on what they do how they like to conduct their presentation and like you know what they intentionally do as as they deliver the information anybody i'll go yes diana yeah, like, so, well, when I meet with them at the beginning and I know like, okay, I'm going to introduce them to the lender, you know, and I just remind them of like what we're going to go over because I let them know in advance, this is their time to bring those questions. And then I also, you know, use that time to say, is there any questions that you have right up front to see what they're more concerned with? Are they more concerned with like the, what the payment's going to be or the inventory or their chances? So up front, I try to find that out. Okay, so asking questions up front, right? Um, that's extremely important, right? right? Um, because what you don't want, you want to make sure that when you do a presentation, right, your delivery, you hit certain points before they become objections, right? Like the best type of presentation that you can do is when you hit all the points that the buyer was thinking, and then at the end, when you ask again, do you have any questions? They're like, no, nope, you actually covered everything that we wanted to hear, right? And the way that you find that out is by asking questions up front about their experience, what's important to you. So I would always say, hey guys, you know, I wanna make this presentation as informative as possible for you and as valuable as possible, you know? And I would say this, right? I would say, so before I get started with my presentation, let's just start off and understand where you're at in the process. What sort of questions? Do you have any questions that are really, really important to you that you want to make sure I answer? And are there any concerns that you have with the buying process? This way I make sure I cover those and I don't leave those out. This is probably one of the biggest, biggest things you can do in any presentation is understanding their mindset and where they where they come from because then from there you can tailor it and you can go down the road that's going to make the most sense to them right you don't want that disconnect jason what do you got uh, one thing that i noticed that uh blanca does is she just brings really really good like energy into that appointment right immediately she's like you know i'm so excited for you guys for taking this first step and you know looking at getting pre-approved or the buying process and, and I've seen Blanca do it in person and I've seen her do it, you know, through Zoom. So it's just, just that positive energy, making the client to be excited about, about the transaction or the consultation, I think is important. So it's just, just bring that positivity. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Um, remember, there's something called the transfer of energy, right? So the energy that you bring to to the table is going to transfer to the client if you're like really low and tired and stuff like that like brenda remember last week brenda what what did we uh uh what did we do to get you pumped up for that call um we did a billion dollar energy uh exercise <laughs> 
the billion dollar energy, right? Like we said, I just won a billion dollars, right? Because there's a billion dollar lottery that just happened, right? I just want a billion dollars. So if you just want a billion dollars, how would you feel? How would you talk? Would you be laughing? Would you be joking? Would you be on top of the world? If you can channel that energy before you jump on your Zoom and say, hey, I just want a billion dollars and do what you got to do to get yourself in the right mindset. Maybe you listen to music. Maybe you got to do something. Maybe whatever. You got to write something down. Look at yourself in the mirror. You got to remember it's time to perform, right? So then when I come on this presentation, if I start off my presentation, like, uh, Jason, let's role play real quick. Let's go. All right. So this is me starting off the presentation, right? As soon as we jumped on. Hey, Jason, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Hey, man, thanks so much for jumping on the Zoom. I know you're, you're a busy guy. I uh, just want to say thanks again for, for the opportunity to sit down with you you and your wife and kind of go through the buying process i'm super excited to meet with you guys um you guys seem like an awesome like awesome people and uh i'm looking forward to helping you guys and seeing how we can get you to that next phase of purchasing your dream home yeah let's do it let's do it okay so stop right there so do you see right off the bat like i brought some excitement i'm smiling and therefore jason is going to smile right so, and also we got to remember, like we're doing this through Zoom. So sometimes like you don't know how the audio is coming in on the other level. So it's just safe to just be a little bit more louder, a little bit more animated, a little bit more joke, you know, stuff like that. A little bit more small talk to kind of break the ice instead of, you know, let me show you how not to do it. Uh, let's role play again. Let's go. Uh, hey, Jason, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. Great, great. So uh, we're going to go over the buyer presentation today. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up. Uh, uh, so this is our buyer presentation that we do with every buyer. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this with you. Okay. Okay, stop. We'll stop right there. Way different. Like, yeah. Was there, was there energy there? Like, I was like just getting straight to the point, straight to the buyer presentation. You got to remember that a big part of securing a client to work with you is, is they feel a good connection with you, right? So if they can feel that good connection because your energy is coming off and because you actually acknowledge them and it's not just about business and straight to the point, then they're going to want to, you know, see you as a friend, right? You want them to trust you. You want them to see you as a friend. You want them, you want to build that intimacy with your client. So making sure that you're able to talk to them and ask questions is uh is really 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 important um and let's role play the next thing um jay let's go. uh okay jason so hey here's the thing man i want to make sure that this time spent today right we got about 30 minutes 45 minutes you know and we'll go a little longer if you have more questions but i want to make sure that our time spent today is really really valuable for you and your wife right so i'm going to go over some things uh to hopefully instill some confidence in you guys in this buying process to hopefully get you to see why we're you know a great team to work with okay and also to make sure you understand everything that it is to know today but before i do that i want to make sure i cover what's important to you so quick question for you guys is what is the most important thing to you guys in this process of buying a home and are there any sort of concerns or things that you want to make sure that i cover once i go through the presentation yeah no i think um you know, one of our main concerns is just how the market is doing. So just understanding that, you know, what, what's going on in the market, you know, if we're going to get getting a good deal on the property and understanding my finance, you know, finance options. Okay. So what I hear is understanding the market, making sure you know, you know, where it's at, if you're getting the best deal and then understanding the finances, all the numbers and stuff like that. Is that correct? That's correct. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. That, and, and I totally agree with you, right? This is a big investment, right? This is your first, guys, first time buying a home. I know you guys' budget somewhere around 1.5 million. That's a lot of money, right? So we want to make sure that we treat this with the utmost importance. I know you guys have been saving for down payment. So I'm going to make sure that, you know, once we're done with this, you understand where the market's at. You understand if it's a great time to buy and understand where you stand financially. Does that sound fair? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Stop right there. Um, okay. So you guys see, this is me being in tune with Jason, right? I'm asking him questions. He's giving me feedback. I'm repeating and affirming to him. 
so that he knows that I understand where he's coming from. Because now, since he told me those are the two most important things, knowing if it's a good deal, knowing if it's a good time to buy and understanding the finances, where do you think I'm going to expend the most energy on in my presentation? Right? Of course, I'm going to cover everything, but I'm going to make sure that I, I hit those points home and I'm going to make sure I spend a little more time and focus on there so that he feels confident on whether he should buy or not. And he feels confident in the finance part of it. Right? And, then, and then the other now, thing you Jason, the other thing you'll do, right? Yeah. You'll go ahead and ask at the end, like, hey, do you know, did I go ahead and answer those questions for you? Right. Are you now comfortable with, with the answers or right? I think that's important is just checking in with them. Yeah. So checking in, right? Like throughout the presentation, you don't just want to be reading that thing word for word and and not checking in with the client to make sure they understand you, right? Because have you guys ever been in a sales situation where the salesperson is just talking, 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 and then after a while, you're just kind of tuning out, and then your phone ring, you're just kind of on your phone, but you're kind of hiding it below the Zoom right here, you're just kind of listening, but you're on your, right? That's because you're not engaged with the client, right? They're not engaged with you. So if you're talking, 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 it's important that you are recognizing if the client is engaged with you, right? If they're moving their head and stuff like that. Or, you know, you, there's physical cues that'll get you to see if they're engaged, right? And usually it's like body language, moving their head, um, you know, kind of reiterating, stuff like that. Uh, that That's a check-in, right? And then what I want to do is I'm going to stop and say, hey, Jason, I just want to make sure that, you know, you're understanding all of this stuff. Am I going too fast? Is there any questions you have so far on what I've gone through so far, Right. And you're going to want to stop periodically, right? Maybe after each page that you go through um, so that you're in tune with them the whole entire time. Because remember, you only got one shot, right? Like this is this right here could make or break whether they see you as the person that they should trust and the person that's going to take them to the finish line. Or maybe eh, I wasn't really feeling this guy or whatever it might be, right? But if you have a really, really good presentation that hits all the points and concerns for someone, at the end, it's undeniable, right? Like if, if they're like, man, this guy's good. This guy really like, you know, understood what we wanted. You know, this, this agent really hit all the points that we were looking for. They got the track record. They got all this. Like, why wouldn't I want to work with this person? Right? So that's important in the delivery. Um, okay. Anything else, guys? Any other, those of you guys that are, doing this at a high level. Um, Diana says, I try to see what their belief system is of the market to address that up front, right? That's a great, great point. Asking them, hey guys, what have you heard about the market? Right, so you can start off your presentation too. Hey, what have you heard about the market or what are your thoughts on the market right now? Because knowing that information too, now you kind of know what kind of client you're dealing with, right? Are you dealing with someone who is like, really skeptical? Are you dealing with someone who's like, hey, yeah, I know the market's up and down, but we still want to buy and we know it's a long-term investment? Or are you dealing with someone who's like, yeah, you know, we want to buy, but only if it's the best deal possible and stuff like that, right? You're going to sense how motivated they are by asking them, what have you heard? You know, what do you know? What are your thoughts? And where did you get that information from? And then let me show you actually what's going on and what's happening in the market right now. Right? Um, what do you do when their video is off? Hey, that's a, that's a great uh, question. Um, Lisa, what do you do when their video is off? So let me ask some of you guys, what do you do when, when the video is off? Just continue with the consultation. Yeah, you don't really do anything. You just you you assume they see you, so you still have to keep up the energy and just keep going. Yeah, that's a little difficult, guys. Um, I mean, what do I do when your guys' videos are off in our in our meetings, right? Like, since there's a bunch of videos off right now, I'm assuming you guys aren't paying attention, right? Or I'm assuming you're like doing something else at the same time, so that therefore I don't have your full attention, right? So, what I would do is, th is there a kind way to ask? them if they can turn their video on. I would try that. 
and I would make a joke out of it. Like, Hey guys, you know, I'm super excited. I would love to see what you guys look like. So we can, you know, establish a connection and build this relationship. Um, is your camera working by any chance? You know, if you guys feel comfortable showing your face, I'd love to see what you guys, you know, look like, because uh, I definitely want to help you guys out. I'd love to meet you and your family and stuff like that, because we're going to be working together closely. All right. So, and I'd smile. Sometimes people turn their video off just out of habit, right? Or sometimes it's because like they don't, you know, they're concerned with what they look like. Maybe they just got off work. Maybe their house is messy or whatever it might be. Um, but I don't think it hurts to ask. Because let me ask you guys this. What's the alternative, right? The alternative is that their video is off you don't ask and they weren't paying attention the whole entire appointment and you miss them anyways like you don't connect with them anyways and they don't end up doing business with you anyways because they didn't they weren't paying attention to all this hard work and they don't truly see the value and then you end up having a client who really doesn't know why you're good so for me my time is valuable i'd want to make sure that you know if possible possible you know th that they can show their face now someone may say like hey i'm right here and they unsaid that you know hey i just didn't want to show my you know my my house is a little messy right now but i'm listening oh, okay great i just want to make sure that you can see me and i can see you too right because i want to make sure that you know we're making the most out of our time because i know this is important to you right and it's definitely important to me but see, like, usually when you call someone out, like when I said, hey, some of your guys' cameras are off today, so you're probably not paying attention. I had Maudi and Anna un turn their camera on, and they are in front of the computer. Maybe they just, for some reason, turned it off. I don't know, right? Um, but what I can tell you is, guys, I do a lot better training when all your cameras are on because I know you're engaged and, and I know you're listening. So for me, it pushes me to give you more when your cameras are on, just FYI, right? Um, because I know, like, damn, I got an audio. And so I got to perform, right? And then I smile at the end. <laughs> Kill them with kindness, right? Kindness, guys. This is a sales job, right? So your delivery and how you word things and how you use certain methods, it's, it all goes towards you influencing the outcome of the appointment, right? So if you got to like kindly ask them to turn it on or you got to like, you know, whatever, kindly remind them. At the end of the day, like we got to shoot our shot. Otherwise, you're going to lose that deal anyway. You're going to lose that client. Okay. What I want you guys to notice is you guys notice I'm not going through the presentation like word by word right now. Right now, I'm giving you a lot of like the tactical tools because the presentation, like you can memorize that shit, right? Like I'm not going to sit here and memorize it with you, right? This isn't like teaching you how to read, you know, a nine page presentation. Everybody could read that, right? You got to do that on your own and, and memorize the information so that it comes off naturally. What I'm teaching you is how to present it and how to deliver it so that you win people over, right? It doesn't matter if you memorize it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. If you memorize this thing, but you don't know a lot of these, you know, these cues and all these things that are going to help your presentation, you can know that thing word for word and you're not going to get far. Right. So that's why it's important that we're 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 going over all these things step by step to really understand how to deliver this in the, in the most effective and powerful way. All right. I'm going to stop right here. What questions do you have now? Give me some questions now. What what questions do you have so far on preparing, delivering? Uh, should you do this? Should you not do that? Or maybe any other input you have on that I haven't covered yet right like this is kind of what some things i do and it's been it's been really helpful and effective when when talking to clients i have an input um so one thing i think is really important when you're presenting guys is using the assumptive type of language that they're already working with you don't keep saying like oh if you decide to work with me like no just assume that they're there because you got them and they're your client and i think using that type of language is just super helpful Yeah, that's that's a great point, Zahara. And Zahara is, is awesome on her buyer presentations. It's you're already speaking as if we're working together. 
So, hey, hey guys, when we start going out and looking at homes next week, um, you know, you're going to notice some of the things we talked about today, and then it's going to all make sense to you, right? Versus like, hey, guys, if you guys decide to work with me, you know, you're already like, there's, there's a difference in the confidence there, right? So when you work with me, right? That's psychology right there, right? That's neuro programming, NLP. When you work with me, you're going to see one, two, three, X, Y, Z, right? Not, hey, not if, because if gives them, you know, like, hey, there's an out. I may not work with you, right? So I think that's, that's a really good point. What else, guys? Let's open up this conversation. When we start touring homes, I like that, Maudie. When we submit your first offer, guys, we're going to go over the, you know, offer consultation. We're going to go deep into the disclosures and all that stuff. Um, we'll get to that when we, when we submit your first offer. What else do you guys do? What else do you guys do in your delivery? Um, I always just try to keep it very like, I mean, I think you guys already touched on this, but like keep them more involved, right? Like not just be like talking, talking, you know, like, Hey, are you guys actually aware of what contingencies are? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, dude, my brother bought a house. He told us all about it. Okay, well, what do you guys know? Things like that. And if they say, oh, um, we've already been working with another agent. I'll be like, hey, did your other agent ever talk to you guys about what escrow is? You know, oh, no. Okay, well, glad you guys are on this call with me now. Let me tell you what it is. Things like that. And keep them engaged, right? Just like have the conversation. My consultations are, are always a conversation, not like a presentation. But it's all based on the same structure of the whole, um, the PDF that we use, right? And then the whole thing was, I love that, bro. Yeah. And sorry, uh, the whole thing that Zahara said is like, do the assumptive, right? Don't, oh, well, you're already working with the agent. Well, if you decide to work with me, like one habit that I made for myself from a long time ago is don't say if, like, if I make a a million dollars, whatever, just say when, when I make my million dollars, when we start working together. That's one thing that I, it's like a life thing for me. But anyway, that, that was it. Yeah, that's a really, really good point that you hit right there, right? You don't want this to be a presentation. You want it to be a consultation. And in a consultation, the difference, right? Presentation is like, hey, you're just speaking and people are listening to you. A consultation is you're asking questions and there's feedback and dialogue, right? It's a conversation, right? So that's a really, really good point that Mauricio said is you don't want to be reading off stuff before you get to each kind of major point. You want to ask them, hey, guys, has anybody gone over this part with you or what do you know about it, right? Um, this way, like he said, it keeps them engaged and they don't just kind of you know, gloss over and, and lose that interaction, right? So I, that's a really, really good point that you hit is that you want to make this as conversational as possible because a conversation, people can sit here and have a conversation you know, all day and be engaged. A presentation, people tune out after a little while, right? It's just everyone has a, a certain attention span right and it also there's going to be depends like what time of day if it's after work are they tired do they got the kids in the background all those different things that's why the engagement is even more important to get them you know locked in i like to try to set up the next appointment um when before the consultation that way and then like or say i'm gonna follow i'm gonna send you homes and i'll follow up with you and you know, let me know which ones you want to tour on like Wednesday or I, I just don't want to be like, okay, well, that's a consultation. I'll, I'll talk to you later. I like to let them know like when I'm going to talk to them and what the next step is going to be. Yeah, that's, um. so now we're segueing into the last part of it, which is like the close, right? Which is perfect. You brought that up, right? Is how do we transition from, okay, we went over all the content, right? In the presentation, And now it's time to get them to sign the loyalty agreement and it's time to get them to move forward to the next step of the process. Right. So like Liliana said is always setting up the next appointment, right? You always want to keep the ball rolling, keep it, the the ball moving forward. So right now is consultation. The next appointment should be go look at homes or if they haven't got pre-approved, go get pre-approved. Right. When can we meet with the lender or, Hey, let's go ahead and just set a time right now. What works for you, you know, tomorrow, what day's best. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to say, okay, guys, you know, go ahead and think about it and get back to me and let me know what you think. And then we'll go from there. 
because when you're doing that, you're opening an opportunity for another agent to come in, to meet someone at an open house, for Zillow to approach them, Redfin, some other company, or some other online offer or anything like that. You're opening the door to someone coming in and swooping up that client because they had a little more urgency. So there has to be like that sense of urgency as well um, that you create with them to move them to the next stage of the process. So never end it with like just open ended, always end it with, okay, next step is this, when can this go ahead and schedule that, that right now, right? And that's how you move them closer to closing. Um, Sahara says, you guys should always be setting the step appointment at every appointment at the end of every showing conversation consult anything right so even that's a good point right every single appointment or every single step should have a next step right so you go show them homes the next step is let's do a consultation if you haven't already done a consultation or let's go over the uh disclosure so we can look at about writing an offer or let's get you on the line with the lender so that we can get that going or hey we saw homes you didn't like any of them Great. Let's go ahead and set our time to go see some more homes because I know these ones didn't match, but now I now I understand a little more of your criteria. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust our search, and um, let's go ahead and see homes uh, tomorrow or the next day. You know, so we can get this moving forward, right? So there's always a next step. Always a next step. It could be like even once you're in escrow, it could be like our next appointment is for us to check in, right? Like, hey, your offer got accepted. Let's go ahead and set an appointment for, you know, in about a week from now so we can do a check-in just to see where everything's at, right? Something like that, right? So that there's always something moving forward and, and to the next step of the process. Okay, um, here's what I'm going to do now. We got nine minutes left. So I want to kind of go over... Um, I want to go over the closing aspect, right, which is the um, loyalty agreement and how we kind of handle that. And going for that next step, like how we handle that dialogue. So I think this is the part that a lot of people get hung up on. So we have the buyer consultation, right? It's pretty laid out, like for you to just kind of go through it. But here's, mm -hmm. here's a mistake that I see a lot of people doing is I see a lot of people just reading off of it, like, in, especially like, uh, you know, beginners or people who are just getting familiar with this, they just read off of it. Remember, this is an outline, right? So you kind of want to paraphrase and summarize because if you just read line for line, line for line, line for line, and you don't like make it into your own words, it's going to sound very robotic, almost like when a telemarketer calls you and you can tell they're reading a script. So just some delivery points, right? To kind of touch on what we already talked about. I would say this, okay, hey, guys, let me quickly tell you about us and, and what makes us special and, and, and why you would want to work with us. First of all, we have over 15 years of experience, uh, over 500 transactions. We have a ton of five-star reviews. Uh, you know, we're partners with Zillow, Redfin. We're members of something called the Top Agent Network, which gives you access to, you know, off-market properties. And we have a lot of experience, like in the mortgage side, the development side, and we're associated with all the top uh, MLS boards and national associations out there, right? So I kind of said it fast versus like, okay, hey guys, we have 15 years of experience. We have over 500 transactions closed. We have over 500 five-star reviews on Zillow and on Google. We're pr Zillow premier agents and Redfin partners. We are members of the top agent network. We have experience in mortgage and development. We have members of National Association, California Association, Silicon Valley Association of Realtors, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, right? Like, <laughs> that's, you don't want it to sound like you're doing the Pledge of Allegiance, right? You want to make sure that you're saying it in your own words and you're paraphrasing that thing so that it sounds like you're talking to a friend or a buddy, Right. What do you guys got? I saw Zahara and then Mauricio. Zahara, what you got? Um, one thing that 
you guys should make a good practice of doing is explaining if you're going to say something, explain why it's a benefit to your client, because especially with the first time home buyers, they really don't understand the process. They don't understand why what you're selling them is beneficial to them most of the time. So you're telling them something they never heard about. And to you, it makes sense. Like, oh, I'm a top agent. I have, I have off markets. If they've never heard of it, or they don't know why that sets you apart, then that, that information you just told them was pretty much useless. So if you're going to say something, just say, and that's a benefit to you because, and then it ties it in for them so that the understanding's there. Yeah, I like that. It's a really, really good point, right? Because like she said, sometimes like what we say could be like foreign language to people. It might sound like blah, 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 right? But until you stop and say, hey guys, and the reason why I'm telling you this and the reason it's important to you is because not, you know, and you go into, you explain why it's important to them and you speak in terms of their benefits, then they go, okay, that's why I needed a top agent. That's why an agent with 500 five-star reviews is important, right? Don't assume that they know why it's important. Drive it home by just adding and what this means to you or why this is important to you or why I think this is important to you guys in your position is because of blah, 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 right? And Keeks, I know you only have like a certain amount of time today to go through and you're probably gonna go through the closing. But if you guys wanna see like the essence of each little um, section that we have on the trade on that presentation, I did do a training a while ago where I kind of break down like the, the point you're trying to convey in each portion so you can put it into your own words without having to just read off of it all robotic like and stuff. And then that way you internalize the message a little bit more. Yeah, no, I'll put the link for that, guys. That is a link that I, I've sent out to a few people, um, right? Whereas this one is, this this training today is a lot on like delivery and sales and like how to position yourself. And then Sahara goes into detail, breaking the whole entire presentation down like word for word. So um, I'll send you guys that link as well. So you can, you know, watch that one. Cause I think it's, it's an awesome one. Um, Maori, what'd you have, bro? Um, yeah, so I mean, can you go back to the screen where we have like that first page? Yeah. So the, this right here, guys, like when I do my when I do my presentations, I always like I ask the questions first, but when I start jumping into it, I don't even use this anymore. I just go into the page like in like when it says 15 years of experience, like I just pull up the Zillow page and um, if you can pull it up and you can like the reviews and stuff. And I talk about, you know, yeah. we have, if I start talking about it um, and then just guys, you know, in the last 12 months, we already, and I, 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 um, I exaggerate, like I zoom in really well. I highlight that last 12 months. Um, and then I scroll down a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, we've helped 166 families in the last 12 months. Um, then I go down to the map. Okay. And I use this one a lot. I'd like if you guys see all these little yellow dots are where we really emphasize our business in. Um, and I zoom out and it's like this whole region here is where we do businesses. And I zoom back in San Jose or wherever they're at, you know, all these little yellow dots are where we've helped families buy homes. So somewhere around here is your little yellow dot. Ha ha ha. And, you know, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh. And that's powerful. Yeah. And it keeps them engaged, but I don't even use that anymore. Like when I really pull up that PDF is when it's like the escrow timeline, um, uh, the contingencies. And then when we start talking about benefits to the, to the client, but that, that's all I wanted to say. There you go. Yeah. So remember, like you can say something, but then if you show them with the real life example, and that's why you have these things pulled up um, and you kind of walk through it. I do, the same, I do the same thing as well. That's what I would do. I wouldn't just read off that PDF. I would actually show them the page and I would explain it. Hey guys, so we have over 500 five-star reviews between Zillow and Google. And then I would just start going down the line. These are all our team members, right? And the reason this is important because we have so many agents that are out there. They're constantly looking for business. There's deals and stuff like that. They're, they're always keeping us up to date with what's happening in the market. Um, and there's other opportunity that can come your way, right? That, we may come from someone on our team, right? So just kind of going down the line, 
this is how many sales we have, you know, tracked here on Zillow, 565. We actually have more than that, but since we started tracking on Zillow, um, right? And then like Zahara said, it's explaining why it's a benefit to them. You can see we have pages and pages of five-star reviews. I, I go down the line and I show them all five stars, all five stars. But that's essentially like what I'm doing when I'm explaining stuff on that, that consultation. Um, so let's quickly go to the last page of it. So you went through the whole thing, right? And this is gonna be your guys' job to memorize this thing, to read it, to understand it, to get really familiar with it. And right. also watch, watch Zahara's when she goes into detail with it. Yeah. Watch Zahara's video, right? Which goes into detail of this, right? That's something that's gonna take some time for you to do on your own. But we get to the last part, the VIP loyalty program. And this part, you know, when I explain it, I basically just explain it as if it's already like going to go forward, right? Like Sahara said earlier, assumptive, right? Close. All right, guys, you know, now we're down to my favorite part. Before I move forward, you know, with explaining kind of the last step in our process, do you guys have any questions about everything we went over, right? And usually by that point, they're like, no, you know, you went on stuff, you know, it's been very informative, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great, guys. Now let me go ahead and talk about, you know, what it looks like when you start working with us, right? So we have what's called a VIP loyalty program, which is different from what any other real estate agent does out there. And the reason we came up with this is we want to make sure that you get the best experience. We want to make sure you get the best treatment. We want to give you competitive advantage, you know, over the agents that, you, you know, you may be talking to. Um, so here's a couple of things you're going to get once we start working together, right? Uh, when you work with me, you know, as your VIP specialist, we're gonna help you get the best financing. And then I'll go into details about the financing and how we have our in-house lender and how we work with over 40 different banks and all that stuff. We'll talk about the off markets and the on markets, which I probably already showed them top agent network. And we'll talk about why that's important. We'll talk about how they can basically, they're gonna be our VIP client now. So if they are driving by and they see a property or for sale sign, they can just take a picture of it, text me and say, hey, Enrique, I saw this property with the coming soon. Can you find out what's going on? And I'm gonna stop what I'm doing to go ahead and find out what's going on with that property. And because we're so well connected, nine times out of 10, I probably know the agent already um, because we already talked about our track record and you know how we're, we're connected in the industry that I'll probably be able to get them into that property before the public. We'll talk about how we're gonna go over the best strategy, make an offer, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna read through everything, but basically I'm gonna go over all the benefits here, right? And how it pertains to them and why it's important. And then I'm gonna to go to the VIP loyalty bonuses, right? So, hey, as part of working with us, this is something that most agents don't do. Um, we wanna make you a special offer, right? These are things you're gonna get just for being our preferred client. Number one is your home warranty, right? Here's why the home warranty is important. Blah, 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 I'll explain that. When you work with us, you're gonna be guaranteed to get a home warranty. Either we're gonna negotiate it with the seller to pay for it. If the seller doesn't pay for it, we're gonna pay for it. And that's a $650 value. We have a cancellation guarantee, which means that at any time while you're working with us, you're not happy with our service. I'm not living up to what I promised you, my expectations, all that stuff. If we're just missing it, you can cancel any time. The only thing I ask is, hey, like, give me 24 hours to fix it. Let me know what's going on. And if for some reason you want to go somewhere else or you want to you know, try your luck with another agent, there's a cancellation guarantee. You can cancel any time. The last thing here is bonus number three. Um, sell for free guarantee. We're so sure that we're going to find your, you know, your, your uh, dream property because we've done such a good job of, you know, going over your criteria. If for any reason, let's say you move into this house and within the first 12 months, you're just not happy. It's the worst house, the worst neighborhood, something like that. Um, you're not happy with the home. Then we will go ahead and list your property and we won't charge you the listing side of the commission. So you're gonna save thousands of dollars. Now the conditions that apply, um, like, hey, if you just wanna buy another house and you wanna sell this one, then we would have to discuss that. But we wanna make sure you're happy with the property you buy so we can kind of cross that bridge when we get there. Usually I have no one ask questions about this part. They're like, okay, because it's something they never heard from any other agent. Um, bonus number for four is you don't pay us any commission, right? Like we're going to negotiate the commission with the uh, seller. You don't, uh, it's typically two and a half to 3% of what's the commission. Um, in some other states, they charge the buyers for commission with us. We're going to negotiate that and make sure the seller pays the commission. Um, 
The only fee that you have with us is an administrative fee, which is due at closing. It's part of your closing cost. It's 995 bucks, uh, gets rolled into your closing costs. And what that's for is our third party transaction coordinator. Um, they oversee all the documents. They make sure that we're in legal compliance. You get a, a, a copy of all your documents at the end in case you ever have to do your taxes or you get audited or anything like that. You're going to have that. You don't pay us anything up front. That's only paid at the close as part of your closing costs. Um, and remember, you're not under any obligation, right? By moving forward with us and now that we're working together, you don't have to buy a property. It's on your terms. If you don't like the home, you know, you don't have to buy it. You're not forced to buy anything. And if we see something that we don't think is a good is good for you, we're going to let you know. So that's pretty much it, guys. And this next part is our cancellation guarantee, which is pretty much what we said before, um, that you can cancel anytime. So it's risk free. You know, if you're not happy, then you just, you know, basically let us know. And you can even have this up front handy and just send this to us. So um, I went ahead and sent this to you guys via DocuSign. If you go ahead and pull up your email right now, I already sent it out. And then and what I'll do is I already have it in DocuSign already prepared, or I could even pull it up there on the spot with them. And we sign it right there. I send it to them and I just get them to sign. And usually at that point, guys, I would say 80% of the time, 90% of the time, the client just rolls forward with it. 20 to 30% of the time, they might have a question at that point, right? And then that's where you tackle that question. Mauricio, what do you got? Um, I know we're going over time, guys. I'll be very, very quick. So with these, this is like the scary part. I mean, especially for me when I was new, this was the scary part, right? Getting them to sign, how do you deliver that um, in a finesse type of way? And I took this from Zahara where it's it's not about, oh, I'm going to send this to you, sign it. It's more like my, the first thing I say is, hey guys, did you find any value at all with this uh, consultation, with the conversation we just had? 100% of the time, yeah, of course. We found so much value. We know so much more. Awesome, awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this over to you guys. Just go ahead and click through it, acknowledge it, and then you'll get a copy for yourself once you uh, fill that out. Just in case you want to reference it again, you'll have that copy handy. Um, so I'm sending it to you now. Go ahead and take care of that, and then we'll jump into the next thing where we start doing the fun stuff, actually looking at what's going on in the market and these homes, and that way we can set something up for the weekend to start touring. Sound good? And then. Yeah. I like that guys. And, and the way he explained it, right. Is he's making it where it's not a big deal. Right. So I want, what I want you to take away from the way I did it and the way he says it, it's not a big deal, right. It's just part of the process. Right. Um, and we want to get to the fun stuff, which is going and looking at home. So go ahead and click through it. Go ahead and acknowledge it. Um, even not using the word sign, instead of sign, just go ahead and click, right? It lessens like the whole fear, anxiety, I'm locked into something. And usually what happens, and then you, you focus on the next step, right? Yeah, go ahead and just click to this and then let's go ahead and schedule a time to start looking at homes. I know you guys want to look at homes this weekend um, and my calendar fills up pretty fast. Um, I want to send this to you, go ahead and click on it, right? Click through it. So. If you just make it like, hey, it's not a big deal. This is part of the process. This is part of what we do. If you did a great job of doing all the other stuff and explaining the whole buyer console, this is not an issue at all. It's when you didn't do a good job of explaining the consultation or where there wasn't that rapport built or you didn't connect with them or anything like that and they didn't feel like confident in you. That's where they start like, well, you know, let me think about it. Let me do this. Let me do that or have a question or you know stuff like that so the moral of the story guys is the better that you can get at understanding the whole presentation and delivering it in a way where it's just conversational it's not a big deal then this whole part it just becomes like another part of the process right and if, if you phrase it like that and make it just part of the process then it's not like this whole i'm committing i'm signing or anything like that um, let's wrap it up guys with questions because we're up on time right now. Hopefully you guys got some value today. What's this end real quick. If you guys have any questions on this part, we'll go ahead and address them and then we'll, we'll wrap this thing up.
I think one, one other thing, Enrique, is that loyalty agreement brings out whether you have a serious buyer, whether they're serious to work with you. And I think by getting them to click on it, if there is any concerns, you can, you can uh, confront those concerns right then and there, right? So you can get a sense of if, if they have other yep. questions or if they're not comfortable, whatever it may be, you can get that, you can go in and address that immediately. Yeah, and you know, that's a whole training in its own, like what they have concerns, but the simple way guys, just to leave you with this is when someone brings up concern, you just go back to the dialogue that we've been using, right? Repeat and approve, address it, go back to why they're doing this, go back to what the benefit is for them. You answered it, it's resolved and go back to, okay, guys, let's just go ahead and get the next step of the process. Let's go ahead and click through. Let's set up a time to show homes this weekend, right? I'm excited to show you guys homes. I'm excited that, you know, that we're working together. Um, let's go ahead and, and get that moving forward. And that's it, right? So the more cool, calm, and collect that you can be like, hey, your concern is like, all right, cool. Hey, totally understand. Let's go ahead and answer that. All right, good. We're good. All right, great. Let's move forward. All right. Um, okay, guys, I want to thank you guys for showing up today. Hopefully this gave you some understanding of the do's and the don'ts and the best practices to give you a better um, buyer consult to be more effective when you're on the consultation. Definitely use everything you've learned here, but also watch Zahara's training where she breaks the actual PDF down in, in detail and kind of goes line by line and how she presents that. Because I think you're going to put these two and there's like, that's what you need, guys. You, you, you learn all this stuff and you go out there and do it. You're going to be solid. You'll be signing buyers left and right. Um, let me know if you guys need anything and we will see you guys soon.